What's good, everybody? It's D. Brown Shanghai here. And today we're going to be talking about NBA celebrations. And what really inspired this video was a conversation I had with one of my homeboys recently. We were just talking about basketball and, and we came upon an old story that happened. And I'm going to give you all the quickest version of this story that I can. But anyway, let's get into the video. So there's a big difference in cooking somebody and cooking somebody and letting them know while you're cooking them that you're cooking them. That's a big part of the game for some people. And, and I was one of those players when I used to play basketball all the time. Because when I was 16, I swear, you could not tell me that I wasn't shift team. I watched everything Devin Williams and Trevor Dunbar did. Whenever, if I score, if if I got you, if I hit you with a move and, and I scored, oh, you best believe I'm running down the court giving you this the whole way. So... If you're one of those players, then you will enjoy this list, absolutely. The first player on the list, of course, being Russell Westbrook, the Brody, because the Brody has so many good celebrations that he, he has to be on the list. The first one being the most recent one, I, I thought this was pretty hilarious. The other night when his first game back, when they played against the Kings, uh, Westbrook hit a, a post fade on De'Aaron Fox, and he ran down the court like this, rocking the baby, like Come on, bro. You you rocking the baby. The baby that you're rocking is a grown ass man who is a millionaire. That is, hey, that's disrespect if I ever seen it, bro. If somebody posts you up and they hit the shot and they're like, hey, it's a baby on me. Give me the ball every time. That's awesome to me. I love it, bro. And that's not even the only time he's ever did something like that where he said he got a mouse in the house or the person guarding him is too little. In the what 2016 All Star game, y'all remember when when Russell Westbrook had like 40 points in like 15 minutes. And he was hitting hella threes. And then him and Isaiah Thomas was going back and forth for a little minute. And then he hit like a shot standing straight up over Isaiah Thomas, like contested. And then he was like, oh, he's too, he's too little. Like, get this little nigga off of me. But that doesn't even top off Russell Westbrook's celebrations. He also got the guns. Y'all know the guns. Every time he hit a three, he gave you one of these. And he also has, I'm sorry, I have notes right here. And I, I am looking at my notes. And he also has that, you know, with the Euro step. That one time he Euroed the Grizzlies. And then he was like, oh. I thought that was hard. They even put that in 2K. A bunch of the a bunch of the celebrations on this list are actually in 2K, which is pretty cool in my opinion. But yeah, that's that's the Brody, bro. The Brody has some of the best celebrations. I'm pretty sure I'm leaving some of them off, like the thing you do like this if he hit a, a contested three. I think he only do it when he hit contested. Maybe I'm tripping. A newer celebration that I think is dope. It isn't really like a signature celebration. It was just something that he did the other night. Uh, Kelly Oubre, when the Wizards was playing the Raptors, he got a putback off of a John Wall miss layup. And he banged it on Pascal. And when he did it, he just, he stared him down. But it wasn't a typical stare down. You know, people get stared down every night in the NBA. But as he's staring him down, John Wall comes back and like, oh, let me dap you up. And so Kelly Oubre, is, he's staring down Pascal while he's dapping John Wall up. Like, I, I don't know why, but that's some cold shit to me. Like, he's staring you down while he's, he's dapping his nigga up. Like, he's looking you in your eyes like, yeah, nigga, what you gonna do about it? And I'm still dapping this nigga up. And the next celebration is one that is a, a classic, undoubtedly. It's, you can't say that it's not because it's been in the league so long. And it's the Sam Cassell Big Balls. It comes from, what's the name of that movie? It's a baseball movie with Denzel Washington. In it. I can't remember the name of it. But that's where he got it from. And he did it in like, I don't, I can't even remember when he did it. But he did it with the, with the Timberwolves. And since he's done it, like, you know, he hit a clutch shot. And he, he ran down the court like this, you know. I got big balls. That's what he, I got big balls, nigga. Big ball shots. And ever since he's done that, we've seen uh, players like, we've seen Kobe do it, Marco Bellinelli, Andre Iguodala, Eddie House. Like countless, if you ever see an NBA player hit a big shot and then he does this, he's telling you, hey, my balls are huge. And that's a and that's a callback to Sam Cassell. So much respect to that. I, I got to do that one day. Next time I, I hit a three on somebody, I got to look at him and let him know, like, look how big my balls is, nigga. <laughs> The next celebration that I want to talk about is uh, LeBron's first year in Miami when when uh, he played they played against the Portland Trailblazers. Uh, LeBron's first game against the Trailblazers, they were playing in Portland, and I don't know what was going through LeBron's mind. This was like when he was still like, oh, I'm going to be the villain. You remember LeBron's first year in, in Miami, LeBron smiled like twice the whole year. That He was, he was on his villain junk. 
And he was so sassy back then. He was just 2011. LeBron was so sassy because he was just like, oh, I don't care what the media thinks of me. So he's busting Portland ass. If I remember correctly, he went for like 44 or maybe 38. But he had a clutch three and he turns to the crowd. And I can't make this up. He turns to the crowd. Y'all probably remember this. And he smacks his ass at the Portland fans as to say, hey, take that. Like he, he literally slapped his own ass. He might as well should have did. He might as well did that. Like he that was so sassy. I think that's like for you to be LeBron James, the best player in the world, and you in the arena slapping yourself on the rear end. As funny as it is, that's a dope ass celebration to me. And they they were pissed. They booed him. They, they legitimately were pissed. And the next celebration I want to talk about is also a classic. I think it was in the 1987 Eastern Conference semis. It was Boston and Atlanta. Isaiah Thomas hit a crazy ass layup in traffic. And it was at the it was at the end of the game. So he he grabbed the ball and proceeded to do a little dance. I don't know what this dance is. No idea. Never seen a dance in my life. But the first time I saw it as a kid, I'm like, oh, this little, you know, I, of course I wasn't alive back then. But when I saw it, I'm like, oh, this little this little point guard got some spunk about him. I didn't know who he was. I I didn't know Isaiah Thomas was you know one of the greatest point guards of all time. But that moment would be the moment that made that led. Is that how you say that? That moment led me. Is it? That moment led me to find out that Isaiah Thomas was who he was. So, yeah. Yeah, that's... Oof. Them grammar Nazis, boy. I could just feel them at the keyboard waiting for me to fuck up, boy. They just, you know, they own it. And the next celebration that I want to talk about is really one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites on the whole list. It's uh, Reggie Miller when he when he uh, went crazy in the garden and scored all those points in like negative two seconds and brought the Knicks... I mean, not the Knicks. Brought the Pacers back to win it. And he looked at Spike Lee. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But he looked at Spike Lee after all of this had happened. And he let him know, hey, buddy, it's your fault that your team choked. And as he let him know that his team choked when he had his hands around his neck, if you pay attention to his left arm, you'll see that left arm go and do one of these. He's grabbing his nuts. He grabbed his nuts. They even say it in the 30 for 30, bro. And if this that wasn't disrespectful enough, guess who's sitting beside Spike Lee when this is happening? His wife. That man looked at him and was like, hey, guys, yeah, your team choked. Choke on this. As he's sitting beside his wife. That's the ultimate level of disrespect. Shout out to Reggie Miller, bro. That's crazy. And the last celebrations we're going to talk about today, uh, James Harden. I'm not going to say one because him, like Russell Westbrook, he has so many good ones. James Harden always coming up with some new some new celebrations. You know, first he had the, the thing, the three, where he ran down the court, and then he had the cooking, and then he had, like, the little threes, like, if he hit a three... Uh, and, and the dance, like it's, it's so much, but the one that I'm talking about specifically, well, the two that I'm talking about specifically are the nosebleeds, you know, whenever, whenever he dunks, he always run down the court, at, like, you know, like you got a nosebleed. And, and the second one, I honestly wish he would do every game after every point. I don't care if it's a free throw. So the game was against the Knicks. James Harden was cooking as always, and he was cooking Lance Thomas. And when he cooked Lance Thomas, he ran down the court doing this little shimmy dance, this little shoulder shimmy dance that you know, I've never in my life seen before, and I've never seen it since. Harden did that dance one time against the Knicks that night, and he never did it again. And when he did it, I, I just I just wanted to keep, like, just keep giving James Harden the ball. Everybody, if, if he's going to be hitting shots like this and then running down the court, being that entertaining, with that, what is that dance? I can't even do that dance, bro. What is that dance? But just keep giving him the ball. Why would you give anybody else the ball? Like, And if there's any chance that James Harden comes across this video, please, James, give them boys one of these. Like, Even if you don't do it every night, like, just give them one more for, for me. Just do it for me so I can see so I can see you do it one more time, you know? And I'm going to record it, and I'm going to just put it on a loop like somewhere. I'll buy a new TV, and I'll just hang it up in my room. So if anybody ever comes in my room, the first thing that they're going to see is James Harden doing that dance. That's how much I like the celebration. So that's all I got for you guys today. What are some of your favorite NBA celebrations? Of course, I know I missed some. Like I said, we can do this. Like, we can make this a series where I just talk about some of my favorite ones. Because there's there's dope celebrations all throughout NBA history. Like, we could go all the way back to when it was, like, black and white. We can do, like, today. Like, I'm pretty sure something's going to happen tonight in the NBA and somebody's gonna have like a pretty cool celebration that's worthy of being in the video. So yeah, we can make this a series, man. I like talking about stuff like this, but let me know what y'all think in the comments. What are y'all favorite NBA celebrations? But if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. If you wanna join the Shanghai fam, subscribe. And as always, I am D Brown Shanghai.
and I am up out of here. Always confident, there's nothing that I mentally fear Except giving in to new trends Never look for new friends Cause I don't wanna ride with some loose ends I'm barely paying rent but it don't matter They tell me bring a plate but I'ma show up with the platter Here's the ladder to success, better grab it for it's too late I'ma be a multi-million dollar man while you hate Don't ask who's great, I'm in your vicinity Privacy